over the years, I've had a lot of people ask me about my workshop and size and how it was built. Well, I came across uh, an old flash drive, actually, that I had in the corner of one of my drawers. And I found all these pictures uh, on it that I took uh, back in 2011 when I uh, built my shop. So I thought you'd, uh, you'd like to see. This is a couple of photographs uh, that I took of my old shop after I'd uh, stripped it out. Uh, subsequently, I've actually uh, made this into an extension of uh, my house uh, because it was actually built in the same um, lines then as the main property being uh, Western Red Cedar and Oak Framing. We purchased the property in 2001. Uh, this is the driveway to our property. It's a small holding farm of about 12 acres. And um, we have lots of uh, birds, um, cockatoos and um, all other sorts of parrots. I don't actually know the names of them. And uh, they perch everywhere. Um, of course, when we go out and feed the, the chickens and the rest of the animals, um, they all come down and have a good feed as well. So they stick around a bit. But the real noisy ones are the cockatoos. And there's probably about a hundred of them. Um, they, they just sort of pack themselves in uh, the trees around the property. And, uh, you know, they come down for a feed like with the other ones. But... Um, they only they stick around for about an hour or so every day. Some of the cockatoos can live over a hundred years, so I think they're going to stick around for a while. As you can see, our property is on the side of a hill, so uh, I hired a, a five-ton excavator and I excavated the ground out two on two different levels, actually, at two steps and um, proceeded in um, putting the foundations in. And you can see even the foundations are stepped, as it were. Uh, the actual size is uh, just a little over 12 meters by 12 meters, uh, which is about 100 and... It's, it's approximately 150 square meters. Oh, by the way, here, one of the concrete trucks uh, came down our driveway and uh, sunk in the ground here so I uh, I had to repair it with concrete so uh, yeah this is we just pour in some of the uh, main foundations here and um, yeah a lot of uh, excavate excavation work was taken taken on and uh, this is showing how the actual step down in the the, the main foundation uh, external foundation and uh, you see we just poured concrete there uh, I made the concrete very very thick around the perimeter uh, it's about two foot thick and then I started the the block work um, my block work isn't should we say exactly perfect as you can see <laughs> I'm not one for um, you know, I, I like to do things properly, but uh, doing this block work, I couldn't get it absolutely square and straight. But uh, it actually didn't turn out too bad. Um, so you, you can see I had to build uh, like a foundation block work up. And I actually, um, the holes that you can see through these blocks, I actually put reinforcing bar in and filled them with concrete. There you can actually see that I, I've left uh, in strategic areas um, sort of weep holes, uh, you know, so the ground can breathe and, and water got somewhere to get out. So that's the general foundation. And I've extended the fund foundation in, in the middle area there into the, the ground, like a, a buttress, as it were. And then I backfilled everything and um, compressed it all down. 
I hired a skid steer uh, loader, and uh, which I, I did most of the work here with. Uh, you know, moving stuff around, and uh, it was a great help because doing this by hand would have been extremely hard. Oh, another thing I had to do too was excavate the ground at that muddy patch that you just saw, um, because concrete trucks sunk in there too. So I'm doing the form work here. So the concrete was in places 12 inches uh, in thickness, and um, uh, in the end, I ended up running, uh, shall we say, trenches thicker areas of concrete um, where I knew the um, the supports were going to be and uh, plus I I knew I was going to have heavy equipment in and I didn't want the concrete cracking so um, a fair bit of overkill here as I was an owner builder uh, every section every part of this uh, had to be inspected by the local authorities so I had to there was some waiting period waiting for them to come out um, so before I could actually have the concrete poured and there it is it's all floated and leveled and all looking nice and there's about two months work just to get this far so then I had my shed delivered which I then started to construct and the weather changed so um, I got a bit damp putting this up, but uh, I had help with um, a few friends. And over the course of, um, I think, about two weeks, we managed to get all the framework up and um, well, we built the entire shed. But, uh, you know, it was a very fairly simple process to uh, erect. Um, it went, to bed, went, went together a, a bit like a jigsaw puzzle, but um, it wasn't too bad. For those of you who still think and work in uh, feet, inches and yards, um, this is 180 square yards. Uh, and I think it's about, let me see, I think it's, I think it's 14 feet high something like that but uh, it's it's a fair size and actually uh, it's been up now for what about seven seven years and I'm actually starting to outgrow it so I'm thinking of uh, extending one side out but uh, that'll be done a little bit in the future so we got all the cladding up and the, the windows in the doors in or the one little door there in the corner and uh, then we started putting the roof on. Yeah, the roof was a, a little bit more difficult for me because I don't particularly like uh, heights, as it were. I know it's not too far off, off the ground, but I still didn't like it a lot. But uh, I broke myself up, actually, and, and got up there and started to do it. But, I, you know, I didn't do it totally on my own. I did have help. And uh, so it took shape. So we finished putting all the cladding on, then it was getting the doors up. And uh, I don't mind telling you that middle door there was really heavy. Uh, we, it, we ended up using two, uh, two blocks and, and winches to, uh, to get it up into, the, up into the top of the roof there. But uh, you know, we, we found a way of doing it. So then we... Well, I got the uh, electricians in then to um, to run all the conduit and uh, put all the all the power points and the the lighting in. And I think they run. Um, I think it's a 25 amp mains voltage, two 240 volt, uh, up to my shed uh, off the off the grid. So I've got plenty of power. And then we started to move my machinery in that I had at that time. Uh, this is before I ordered my CNC machine that I started with. And, uh, well, 
it turned out very well. I think the whole process took about about two and a half months, I think, from start to finish, and we ended up with a fair size workshop for me to start working in, and uh, it ended up, you know, really pleasing for me. I something I've wanted for years, and uh, there it is, and it blends in with our property as well. I've had a few of you ask me about uh, they've seen horses uh, on my in some of my videos, and these are the these are the boys, uh, some of my friends. And no, they don't get ridden. Actually, I'm getting a little too old for that sort of thing. So there you go. Thank you for watching, and I hope you tune in again.